I am 63 years old and alone. I am so concerned about Americans and what will happen to us all. Don't worry. <laughs> Seriously. Like, I know I, um, I can be rather serious, you know, not me, right? <laughs> um, but I let it go quickly because even though it's the worst of times, it's the best of times. It is. Um, I realized that in 20, so many things I realized in 2020, like many others, but there was a few things that came on me suddenly, like all at once. One of those things being that the question I had been praying about for so long about why, when I do the right thing, God, why, why is it always that, you know, I'm a ta I, like, well, how is that right? And then it dawned on me. It's like, well, yeah, that's what happened to Jesus. <laughs> If this would have been a right world, they wouldn't have crucified Jesus. Not saying I'm Jesus. I'm just saying it's not a world that rewards really doing the right thing. It wants to act like it is, but it's really not. The other, the other thing I realized that came to me, and it was so simple once I realized it, that I wondered, why didn't I know this before? It, you know, people want to talk about the rapture and all this stuff. There's not going to be a rapture. That's just the church misleading people into thinking, yeah, you're just going to get a free ticket out of here. No, um, God will protect you during, you're always in under tribulation many times. Different people are at certain times. It's just the way it is in this world. Um, it's a race, as God said. Um, finish the race. Uh, but what I realized, it, and it makes more sense, is that God uh, wipes the wicked out. And many, and I, not because I heard that from anybody. It's just it all, all the that came on me. And there was something else that I realized, and it was oh, it was that um, God makes all things new. That that talks about that in the Bible several times about making things new. Most especially the most tear jerking mo moment of the Passion of the Christ was when Jesus, you know, kept falling with the cross. And there was that moment his mom came, Mary came up running to him and he looked at her and he said, look, mother, I make all things new. So it's like heart jerking um, as he's all battered and bloody. Uh, you know, everybody wants to tell you, oh, the stock market, you know, the bank's going to crash, this is going to crash, that's going to crash. Well, you know, we don't know. They've been saying that for years, okay? And everybody says you need to stock up on this and that. Yeah, no, I say you need to stock up on your relationship with God. That's what's most important. Because, you know, if you believe in God, then you know in the Old Testament, he provides all that. He had to provide them in Exodus water, food. That's what worried them many times was they... They had to learn to depend on that. God was the provider. Again, if he provides for everything else in nature, and he cares about us more than he cares about all that stuff, and if he'll provide for them, then he'll provide for us. We just usually don't. We want to be in control. So um, in order to bring the new, the old has to fall away. So even though it can look scary, you know, looking at it from one angle, it, it's not. So the reason I realized that was true, that uh, God would have to intervene, is it because of logic and because of what uh, God did in the Old Testament. So logic being that when you have an entire world under a globalized system, everything everything from health, the monopolies of health care, monopolies of retail, the monopolies of education, the monopolies of government, and then add the technology and the advancements there, you're, screw, you're screwed. I mean, look at how they were able to brainwash everybody just with propaganda. Think about the level they could do that with the next generations, which is part of their digital gulag. So if the whole world falls under that, there would be no chance of people finding their way to God, the a Bible God. So in the Old Testament, God is always trying to keep the people away from the juvenile hall kids that went off and didn't listen to God's word. And then God hands their country over and just says, okay, you're done. You've been handed over. Just go go have your jollies. Go go do all your immoral things that I've asked you not to do. I, you know, yeah, just, you know, just do you. <laughs> but God's always trying to keep a, a certain group of people, in the Bible it was the Israelites, away from that, which is why it was, which is why God, the creator of all this was not as diverse as these crazy lunatics. 
that run the nursing profession, that run the education, that are in our politics. Yeah, God wasn't that diverse to have open borders. He was totally against that. So when the Catholic Church wants to claim, no, God was about, no, no, he totally has it wrong, but then you can expect that here. No, God was not that diverse. God was, be careful about who you let come into your country. Be careful. You don't want to be taking on the cultures of, babe, you know, worshiping Baal and sacrificing your babies. That's always what would happen. The cultures would become normal. And it's like, oh, that's no big deal. Yeah, let's just throw the baby into the fire because everybody else is doing it. Like, can I mean, does that seem really strange to people? It may. But then look at your surroundings, how many people just go along with everybody else. Don't do any thinking. You just go along with whatever the media says or the government says. And there's most people that will, there's many, many that you, there will never be a way to snap them out of it. Even if they're given all the truth, they won't because they've been so indoctrinated into it. So if they can take a system out completely, the whole world, then there's no longer a lighthouse. God always wanted a lighthouse uh, somewhere. Even if every nation around that lighthouse was handed over in, in the depths of all different you know, gods that were false gods and, or government worshiping government as gods, God always wanted a lighthouse. Because that lighthouse represented a place that people could get to if they chose. America has been that lighthouse. So all the other countries, they already have control over, which is why America is unique in that way. But every country has their uniqueness too. And I think, I think in many ways that that's why Trump was appealing to pe the people of other countries. The people, not the governments maybe, but the people. <coughs> Excuse me. Because he represents, many, not everybody wants to come to America. Many people love their countries. Irish people love Ireland. You know, many of them, they don't want to come to America. They want to make their country great again. That makes more sense, right? They want, you know, and that's, I think, what Trump, Trump represents to the everyday people, most in the world anyway. Um, not that he would be their government, but he's about each country having their own sovereignty and building their own greatness. Because every country has their own natural resources. That's how good God is. Yeah, that's how good God is. He made your countries have certain resources just for that your make you special. Yes, that's God. That's how great the biblical God is. He's that good. Science couldn't figure that out ever, but that's what it is. So um, if you God does not intervene because he gave free will. So if he had to always intervene, then he, he's... He's not given free will, but he does have to intervene when the con when when the whole world will be taken in, can be taken into a system where there's no lighthouse anymore, because one you know system like a technology type system would be controlling every generation that comes and never find their true God. Yeah, so um, that's when I realized, no, God, this is we're living. Although it's the worst of times, we're living in the best too. We would just like it's dark, it's dark, but we would just like the best to come. But you're, you're, most people are lucky to be alive right now, really. So you have to try to, you know, I like even though it, it, I get really down about it, I, I quickly snap out of it because it, in order, it all has to fall away because God wants to remove it all. It's all, it's all corroded, it's all corrupt, it's gross. He wants to wipe it out. So something better can be built that the way, you know, and the people that know God can help build that system. That's my, it's, that's, that's how I've seen it since 2020. So no reason to be concerned. Um, I know in another question in this comment section, you asked how my dad is. He went into alcohol withdrawal, so he's in the hospital. He's fine. He just, yeah, so I did what I could do. It's in God's hands, and so he'll be okay. Um, but, yeah, he did start having some some withdrawal, so he need to be hospitalized. Um, yeah, nature of the beast with alcohol, literally a beast. Many times alcoholics want to use alcohol to try to kill themselves, but there's kind of a standing joke in, in AA anyway that you, you God doesn't let you kill yourself. He just keeps letting you hit a worse bottom, and it's kind of true. There was a comedian that was recovering alcoholic years ago who said, you know, if you're an alcoholic, you got to make sure to double up on your methods. Like you got to jump off the building and shoot yourself in the heart. Otherwise it won't take. <laughs> it was a joke. It's, but it's sort of true. So yeah, it's dark times all the way around, but don't worry. The best is yet to come.